Okay, good morning, afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us in your lunch time to talk about my DNA health and one of our case studies. Um, so our title for today is Pri Prioritising Nutrition and Lifestyle Interventions Using the Optimal Health Platform. Um, and we're going to be doing that today by um, discussing a case study, which um, we will be working through to help contextualise uh, the product and the way that we work at MyDNA Health. So I'd like to just introduce the team. I am Eve Pearce and I'm Scientific Officer for MyDNA Health. So I work uh, with the science behind the scenes and helping with educate. And I'm joined today by Magda, who is our clinical dietitian, uh, whose case study this was today. So she will be helping me talk through the case study. Uh, and also on the on the team, we have Neve. Neve isn't with us today, but Neve is our representative in Ireland, also a practicing nutritional therapist and um, gives us great insight into cases that we have uh, in the in the, in the business. Okay, so I just wanted to highlight what we do as a company. Um, we combine DNA testing with lifestyle analysis, so using uh, questionnaires and um, that side of sort of nutritional healthcare pract practitioner practice as well, combining the two. And this is quite unique. And we put those two together to build our DNA reports. Um, and we've been doing that since 2014. Uh, we have a, a good package of online um, ways of working now. So we have both practitioner and client portals and we'll be giving you some insight into that today as we work through the case study so you can see what it looks like from a client point of view and what it looks like from a practitioner point of view which can be very useful for working online and the practitioner portal allows you to have a, a very useful online tool to help you with your practice and that's the way it has been designed to help you uh, with working on a lot online and obviously in 2020, this has proven to be very useful and popular uh, due to the, the need to move to the online, the online space as much as possible. So we give these detailed online reports and our ethos effectively is to nudge people towards optimal health. So it's a nudging behaviours. Um, and also, of course, we do a, a large amount of education. So we educate practitioners and clients, patients as needed. Um, within the platform. Okay, so this is a slide looking at how the company works and how it's different from others. Um, I'm just going to hand that over to Magda so that she can explain from her point of view how, how she sees the company working. Hello everyone. So first of all, my DNA health product is complete uh, combining two factors genetic testing and lifestyle assessment. So in practice, as dietitians, you order a genetic test for your clients through the practitioner portal on my DNA Health platform. And your client in turn completes the lifestyle questionnaires on his or her client portal. And my DNA Health then combines the two results to give a consistent and personalized recommendation. Fabulous, thank you. Okay, so this slide is one that explains this process of putting in the questionnaires and the genetic data together. So um, Magda also can talk through this slide, uh, this continuing cycle. So first, uh, the selected genes are checked and the current lifestyle is assessed. And highly important thing is that we choose SNPs that we test very carefully. Uh, so we select only those genetic changes that have been confirmed in scientific research and for which there are no conflicting scientific reports. And my DNA health report is prepared based on the genetic results and actual symptoms. Uh, it covers over 20 of the most important health areas such as lipid metabolism, carbohydrate behaviors, detoxification, inflammation, and so on. And then importance of each of them is described in detail in the reports. The results are broken down into three levels and classified as viewed moderate or severe. 
Um, for all of the polymorphism, there is a suggested intervention that can be used to compensate for the effect of fossil genotype. And the recommendations take into account the suggested lifestyle changes, uh, the addition or elimination of specific food products uh, from the diet, and possible supplementation. And finally, after a while, your client may complete the questionnaires again to see if he or she has made any progress. Additionally, you can also prescribe functional tests related to risky areas. And the entire process is online, which is especially important in the present times of COVID. And if you'd like to get familiar with our web platform, we can email out the link to our last webinar. Yes, we have previously covered, um, so we didn't want to go into too much depth today. And of course, we can we can send out the link for that recording of going into these uh, the, the two portals and how they work together. Okay, so the focus of our case study today is a gentleman named Harry. Um, this was Magda's client or patient, so I'm going to hand over to Magda to, to introduce Harry to us. So Harry is 41 years old. He is a husband and father of two children. He works as an IT specialist and leads a sedentary lifestyle. Um, after a minimum of eight hours of um, daily work, he does not perform any physical activity, absolutely any. And the main health reason for his contact with our team was an excessive body weight. Uh, which started to cause him to feel uncomfortable. And he was really particularly interested in getting genetic insights, wasn't he? He was, he was quite keen on having that, yeah. that kind of smell and understanding, yeah, right. which is not uncom uh, uncommon with um, clients and patients. They hear about tests and they, they really want to get involved and, and can be inspired by it. So Magda did an initial interview um, with Harry alongside the test. Um, Harry took the optimal health test, the SOAR, more basic package. Uh, there is a higher one for practitioners, but this case study was done using the optimal health test itself. So if you just want to run through what happened at that interview. So the interview included his medical history and the health history of his close family, medications and supplements. And what we learn is that Harry has no major health problems and so does not take any medications, but there is family history of heart disease. And Harry has been taking three supplements for many years, um, like multinutrient supplement and probiotic acidophilus. And in addition, Harry told us that he often experiences gastrointestinal complaints in the form of bloating, solid stool and uh, heartburn. Great. And we have a timeline for Harry as well, which I found really interesting. Yeah, in order to uh, understand Harry's current obesity issues, we question him on his weight history and how long he has had problems maintaining a healthy weight. And as Harry described, the weight of 130 kilograms is typical for him and did not change for a long period of time. Uh, throughout his life, he has tried only one slimming diet, uh, which was called 423, which he found on the internet and began to practice in 2015. The diet consists of adding a maximum of uh, 600 calories per day for three days. And on the remaining four days, you can eat free, freely, uh, whatever you choose. So this way of eating lasted one and a half years. Uh, and during this time, Harry managed to lose uh, 25 kilograms. Uh, he found it easy to follow this type of diet and claimed that he ate a lot healthier and even on those four days during which he could, he could eat any food, um, uh, it was still healthier. But unfortunately, in the turn of 2018 and 19, uh, our client encountered huge life stress, uh, which initiated a slow return to the previous 
excessive, by the way. Uh, and this problem led us to our team. And I think that isn't something that is uncommon in clients, is it, to have a history of, of weight loss and then regain and looking for different ways to try and tackle this um, to, to, to come up with different solutions. It's something that I certainly see a lot in my own practice and I know that you do as well, Magda. So he's not, he's not really an unusual client as such, but 25 kilos is quite a significant amount to have lost and then regained. Yeah, that's impressive amount, actually. Yeah. Okay, so here's his dietary intake. Um, which yeah. is really interesting. So. <laughs> so I can continue uh, that our clients usually eat uh, three meals a day. So that was breakfast at 8, lunch at 12, and dinner at 5 p.m. And between these meals, there are some snacks, which are an integral part of the daily typical menu of Harry. Um, by looking at Harry's eating habits, uh, we can see that he eats far too few vegetables, fruits, proteins, and complex carbohydrates. On the other hand, there is too much processed food, sugar, and uh, let's say bad fats in his diet. Uh, fluids are also an important element of her diet and source of calories uh, because he usually drinks fizzy drinks and uh, no, the zero version, the full calorie version. And uh, it was also worrying that his consumptions of alcohol exceed NGS guideline. Yeah, so Harry's consumption of alcohol was far in excess of the NHS guidelines. Um, so something obviously for immediate concern um, on top of his quite disordered eating pattern, pattern of eating really. His, um, it's um, definitely far away from what he was describing from the 4-3 diet that he was using before. So he's clearly fallen into a different pattern of eating here but as that was also related to the stress he was experiencing at that time yeah and it's quite interesting he was just so open about how how he was eating at the time yeah. he was you know able to really share his day-to-day -day living Okay, so part of, of the optimal health tests uh, that, that we offered to Harry is um, the SNP data itself. So I wanted to give an insight of how this looks on the practitioner portal on the practitioner website um, so that you know that the raw data is there and it is available if you would like uh, to, to look at that. Um, the client themselves don't see this page. It's, it's not that in, easy to interpret from a client point of view, so it's kept on the portal for the practitioners to have a look at. Of course, I've got here on the on the left of the screen the um, the kind of the the mode of practice of my DNA how to help um, kind of understand this concept. So we have the DNA data itself, which is in the gray, in the green, and then that is combined with the diet and lifestyle information that we gather through the, the extensive questionnaires uh, to bring together to the optimal health report, which is then presented to the client, to the patient. Uh, and we have a, a, a picture of how that might look to the client on the next page. So this kind of nuts and bolts, nitty gritty is really for the practitioner only. Um, and in support of that, there is a huge range of practitioner notes, suggested eating plans and, and lots of free resources there for you to engage with to help you with your practice. So in this case, we can see that Harry's got 23 SNPs here, 23 sets of data, um, and that's for the optimal health test. If it was the pro test, there would be roughly 40, 42 SNPs there. So it's a depending on which test has been used. So it's the putting of the two bits together that's so important. And I thoroughly believe as part of my DNA health that we actually really help practitioner and support by doing the hard work of combining, combining the raw DNA data, which as you can see is, is not that well, not that easy to interpret on its own it's not very engaging we we put that together with the diet and lifestyle questionnaires to make a report that's thoroughly usable both from the practitioner and the client uh, experience to run through so our next page has a look at this avatar report of where we 
combine the information together. And this is one of the first pages that the client will see um, is an overall look at them. So it's their avatar. Um, and at the top, we have the legend of a typical moderate and elevated. And these have been um, traffic light -like coded uh, to make to make it more visual and understandable. So we have um, green for typical, orange for moderate and red for elevated. Uh, and this is an overall look at both the DNA SNP data and the questionnaires put together. And it's a nice place to start, really, when you're talking through the, the test with a client. So do you, do you want to just talk about um, how you did that with Harry Magda, how you explain this section? Yeah. yeah, I usually explain here the order of the recommendations that we will implement. And when the avatar is read on red and orange dots, it becomes difficult for the client to apply all the recommendations at the same time. And this is why I usually start with the areas highlighted as severe and focus on them until the client uh, makes an improvement in these areas or becomes comfortable with new habits. And then we move into areas marked in orange, but of course not forgetting uh, the previous recommendation. And with green areas, I usually praise and congratulate on the results that clients have achieved. And um, I also ask clients to continue their correct habits here in the green area. Yeah, I think, I think it's lovely to be able to praise a client for green areas. I find that really, really helps when you're explaining these tests as well as to offer some praise as well and, and congratulate on good areas. Um, so just to note that this page will update as the client changes their questionnaire data. So the DNA never changes. But the questionnaire data, of course, can be updated, as we saw in the slide earlier that Magda applied with this continuing cycle. And so this avatar will improve over time as areas are worked on it and can be really nice way of working through a journey with a client, with a patient. Uh, and I find that it's highly motivational with, with clients as well when they see the, the orange popping up more and then eventually turning to green. So it is a really nice tool to use uh, and is available in both the client and practitioner portal so you can um, see the progress that, that's happening. Okay, so obviously um, Harry is a weight loss tool, is, is a weight loss client. Uh, and this is just a diagram, it's taken from some of the practitioner information um, so what we do is we give a, a, a information in all the areas that can relate to a propensity for higher BMI so that that information is there for you. And I think in this case, there was three areas that you really focused on first, wasn't there, Magda? So we just, yeah, if I just change the slide, we can see that the, um, it was blood sugar balance, the omega-3-6 balance and information. So how did you kind of highlight that to Harry? Was that using the avatar? Yeah, exactly. So we started with the, uh, with the red dots, uh, as I said before, and that was related to those three areas. So yeah, that's how we started. Yeah, so it's really useful from a practitioner point of view to have that direction if needed. Of course, you can choose to, ch to tackle any of the areas that you think is most important. Uh, so we're just going to talk through some of these areas for Harry and just highlight some key points. Okay, so this is um, kind of a slide explaining the uh, how, to some extent, how the algorithm works behind the scenes. So you don't need to worry about this as a practitioner. This is just what's going on in the background, but it can be useful to understand. Is that so? Hopefully, you can see here we have two questionnaires. Um, so we have a number of questionnaires in the questionnaire for the area for the um, for the patient to fill in in this case directly related to the omega-3-6 imbalance report which was one of the sections of the avatar that we saw earlier that was uh, severe or um, for harry we have two questions that feed into our overall model of lifestyle and dna working together and that will give you your overall report so we have one that's looking at central fatty acid deficiency and one that's looking at omega-3-6 balance in this case with harry he's he's coming up as a 
score of moderate on the questions for the fatty acid deficiency and his balance is coming out as more severe. So together those are taken as one score and that has gone into the, uh, the behind the scenes algorithm as a severe. Uh, and also his genetics, his DNA, we, we um, test for two SNPs here specific to um, the omega-3-6 pathways related to the um, D5D and D6 D desaturase enzymes, so FADS1 and FADS2, which are strongly associated with your essential fatty acids profile. Um, and um, we put that information together to generate an overall um, overall score uh, which will be seen so if Harry um, can work on his intake this potentially will change to an orange and then to a green depending on the algorithm behind the scenes so hopefully that helps explain how the algorithm is working for you in the background and you don't need to do anything for that, that that's just happening uh, and I find it very useful in, in clinic um, not to have to worry about combining the DNA data with what's known about the, the light diet and lifestyle advice at the moment in the literature to give me a quick kind of go to to um, to work with in practice. So I don't really want to talk too much about the genetics today. There are web webinars available recordings on this area in the practitioner portal um, but just to highlight that we look at these two different SNPs um, and in this case Harry is coming up as a homozygote for the FADS2. So FADS2 is the gene promote, uh, is a SNP in the gene promoter re region of the D6D um, gene uh, and it is known to um, increase the delta 6D activity uh, by changing some transcription factor activity there. So at a genetic level, this, um, this gene effectively will work a little bit faster. Uh, and the overall effect of that is that you will see that on the Omega-6 series, which I'm sure you're all aware of, is that this pathway, um, generally the linoleic acid will get funneled down to arachidonic acid at slightly, slightly faster rate. Uh, through the D6D enzyme, which is up here, uh, and the evidence in the literature is, sh is showing that. Uh, and then this will lead to an accumulation more of that slightly more inflammatory um, e ecosinoid pattern that we, that we see as practitioners. So the, the advice from, from the report really is to um, consider reducing the input of omega-6 dietary sources, whether that's up here at the linoleic acid or even to loading with more arachidonic acid from the diet here, and to kind of balance that with some EPA and DHA supplementation or with changes to diet. Um, and this is just a slide showing um, some of the research that's there and there's a reference at the bottom um, and there's more references available on the practitioner website as well, looking at some of the diseases that have been associated with these changes in these desaturase enzymes. Uh, so it's to do with the, the different speeds of these enzymes effectively and there's a whole range. I've just listed a few here for you um, and um, the references at the bottom. So the next area that uh, I think you really looked at, Magda, was the blood sugar balance. Um, and although this isn't one of the highest priorities because it's the moderate, I think you, you um, because you took an overview of the whole case and you could look at the questionnaires, you thought it was very important to look at, at this area for Harry. So it's just an example of how even if the area isn't severe, the questionnaires might lead you to want to intervene in that area earlier rather than leading, leaving it to later. So just to explain, the blood sugar balance report um, is a combination of sugar sensitivity questions and um, these four SNPs that we look at to bring together to give the overall report. And Harry is a moderate for both. Uh, and of course that will lead to a moderate area. So if I just go to the next slide, um, you can explain what really highlighted for you, Magda. So here is a screenshot from the platform um, to give you an idea how the questionnaires look like. And there are two sections in the online questionnaire related to the area of blood sugar sensitivity. And the first of this is associated with the symptoms of hypoglycemia 
why the second relates to the other side of the equation in the form of insulin resistance. And based on the questionnaire results, Harry has no symptoms of hypoglycemia. However, he responded that he experiences um, increased thirst and has sugar cravings after meals. So although his overall results in this section is moderate, I found that um, area very important, especially considering lots of simple sugars in his diet in form of, in form of fizzy drinks and no physical activity and some experience of headache, uh, fatigue, eggs, and, and weakness as well. Yeah, and so that real lots of fizzy drinks he's taking in, all those sugars and the fatigue, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I just move on. You can explain, how, so this is a view that, um, of some of the information that's available in the client report. Um, so Mag, did you want to explain how you talked Harry through this? Yes, yeah, so even though sometimes um, the, the recommendations are very treat and technique, often patients need to feel that they are directed at them and not at the rest of the population. Um, and this allows them to feel the burden of responsibility for their own health and um, the motivation to change. So the recommendations here um, is simple. But I saw that um, that motivated Harry very much. Yeah, so I think like most of us, Harry knew he shouldn't be eating some of the foods he was eating. He should be eating more whole grains and less sugary foods. But to actually see it in the report, um, we know is very helpful for motivation and compliance and useful for, for, for patients and clients to see it actually written out. So we've just highlighted in red here the bits that you talk through. Um, with Harry. So this is um, just some screenshots from the practitioner account on the portal that you will find, uh, which um, is there available for you for free. Um, so do sign up for an account if you don't have one already. Um, and I just thought it'd be useful to talk through with Magda how she uses the practitioner information in her practice. So at the beginning of my journey with um, nutrigenetic testing, I found it very helpful um, as all the necessary information was gathered in one place. That was really useful. Um, and as genetic is not an easy topic and you may feel a bit lost in all that overwhelming data, especially if you've just started working with tests. Uh, however, as time goes on, you will feel much more and more freely and the report will be primarily a ready to use material for the patient. And that's how I found that. <laughs> yeah, very useful to use at the beginning. And as you get more experience, you might yeah. find that you need it less and less, but it's always there if you want to go back and have a review and a look uh, at the information. Okay, so finally, we'll just have a little look at Harry's inflammation report. Again, it's the same setup. He ha uh, we have two aspects of the questionnaire data, uh, which are getting inputted into his, uh, his environmental side of the, of the equation, the algorithm that's running in the background. And we look at these SNPs, uh, so the IL6R um, and others, which are fed through into the report. Now, Again, Harry is severe in, all, in both areas, so naturally that will lead to a severe uh, in his report. But if he makes some alterations to the questionnaires, then this algorithm will alter uh, down to the moderate and then hopefully down to um, the typical. So we know that Harry's got some genetic predispositions to inflammation, but how did you talk through this with Harry? Um, so in reaching to the area with Harry, I emphasized to him that taking care of inflammation section is especially important for him for two reasons. First, there is a history of heart disease in his family. And the second, his current diet and lifestyle contain all the greatest oxidative stressors in form of high sugar, alcohol, and stress, and that his body is not coping well with. So his diet is, um, his diet is not good in terms of inflammation, but uh, furthermore, his genes don't support him in that area. 
and an urgent intervention was needed. So I think it's really interesting that a lot of the things he does is tying into the report um, and that, you know, was it a surprise to him of this area? Had he thought about information before or was he aware of it? No, he wasn't. He was very surprised. I mean, he knew that his diet wasn't good, but he didn't uh, knew the consequences. Okay, yeah, so this can be a really useful area of education for clients, I find as well, that uh, this underlying theme of chronic information. And that's a perfect um, source of motivation for them. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. So I'll leave you to talk through this one, Magda, about your initial key points. Yeah, uh, in her case, there were so many basic and huge dietary mistakes that we started with some uh, obvious quick win. First of all, that was fluid intake because, as I already said, um, he took a lot of a lot of fizzy drinks and um, no water or other drinks and a lot of alcohol. So uh, I also recommended him to avoid alcohol or at least to um, um, minimize the, the amount. Then. Uh, there was also no physical activity in his lifestyle. So I recommended to first to contact his GP if he can perform any and what the best to start with. And then I also recommended to uh, cut down on junk food and uh, at least replace that with some healthy stuffing options. And they, uh, then I introduced healthy plate to him because his diet, nothing to do with healthy eating habits. And uh, I also gave him some summary tables on food that he should contain in his diet and food that should avoid. Um, and he, used, uh, he found that very helpful for, and, or used that as a shopping list. So um, when he was going for shopping with his wife, he started to use the summary table. I think that's great. So this is a, a small snippet of the summary table and they are available on the practitioner website uh, as information there about different different foods. And, and, and I can see Magda that you've just adapted it for your own use, which is really nice to see. So th this is quite um, kind of generic quick win, as you say, information. So our next slide looks at how the DNA report has really um, looked to take this knowledge further for Harry and really personalise it to another level that's useful. If you want to talk through this one, Magda. Yeah, next we applied in-depth and much more personalised intervention. And as you can see, for each of the genes, there is a scientifically proven intervention. On the basis of a screenshot of a small part of the table, you can observe how the recommendation has changed after taking into account the genetic information. Uh, customers usually find it much more precise and detailed. And uh, genetic testing not only benefits the patient, but also facilitates the work of nutritionists. So for example, text to the test, this particular test for Harry. I know that Harry should uh, not have problems with cholesterol, but um, we should focus in particular on the ratio of the omega-3 to omega-6. Then uh, I know that Harry will need more, more control and supple when trying to lose weight. And what's important is that I have to warn him that the process may take longer and he must be patient. Then, uh, I know that Harry has a genetic predisposition to snacking, so the diet must be designed so that he does not feel very hungry and does not reach for unhealthy snacks. Uh, then, as we said, he has a predisposition to inflammation. Uh, then he also is lactose intolerant and uh, he metabolizes caffeine slowly that I wouldn't know about genetic testing. And... Uh, also, um, suggesting supplements uh, would be APA and DHA, um, and turmeric or the resveratrol could be as well. And uh, because stress levels were high and uh, his body is not coping well with stress, 
we could also use some supplements to reduce stress. And also it's quite um, useful to know that he needs to check glucose levels much more often. And uh, he could also consider testing blood fatty acid status or um, cortisol level. Fabulous. So it's also nice that some of the themes of his, his areas run through together and he can see the importance from different angles. So I can see the omega-3 popping up in many of the different recommendations. So hopefully that was that was easier for him to look at the whole picture, that he can tackle a lot of areas and by doing similar dietary interventions. It's really great. Thank you. Okay, so this is after a month uh, with Harry. Um, I'll let you talk through what happened. So that was very nice that um, he absolutely uh, don't drink alcohol now. And he started to swim, it was fabulous. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, he also felt much more motivated um, with his current habits. He stopped eating junk food and uh, um, he ate much more vegetables after that uh, initial intervention. And uh, his, um, his shopping list was much better. <laughs> Um, so he, he just stopped buying junk food or bad food and replaced them with uh, good ones. And he found it very much easier than to continue healthy eating. Um, and what's, uh, what was also very nice and important is that he lost maybe not much because that was one kilogram, but uh, other measurements change as well as you can see on the slide. So he's really working towards more long-term changes, not this kind of short-term yo-yo approach that he's had before. Yeah. It's an overall approach I can see, which is really nice. And of course he stopped buying lactose products. So he would went yeah. for them, you know, did he know that before about the lactose? Was he aware no. or? No, he didn't. Uh, he, um, he was actually very surprised about that. He ate plenty of uh, high fat dairy before. And uh, what was also very important for him is that he started to take his stress issues more seriously than before. Uh, he also understood why he has um, so much trouble with appetite and why it's difficult for him to stop eating and craving. And he prepares for a long-term change, no, the short-term slimming diet, taking that test. Yeah, understanding if you have a genetic predisposition to snacking and craving food can be very powerful. Uh, and I've, I've certainly seen that one as one of the, the very powerful messages that can come across from a DNA test. Yeah, really good. Yeah, he realized that he must be more understanding with his body about the speed of weight loss yeah being a bit kinder to himself as well amazing okay so we we do have a quote from harry which i won't read out but basically he was he was happier which i think we got from the last slide of magda is that he was he had a new kind of way of thinking about his health um and he you know he had understanding before but he he, he had a new perspective on it which i think is really nice So I just thought it would be really useful just to think about some of the benefits of genetic testing using this kind of algorithm of both questionnaires and the DNA testing together. Um, and we, we, we had a little thought about why in our own practices we find it useful. Um, I think particularly both see that you can build long-term relationships with clients and patients, whereas traditionally sometimes it's thought you do a DNA test and then it goes in the cupboard and isn't used anymore. You don't look at that information. So it's this ability to keep updating the questionnaires uh, and can give you a really kind of long-term goals to work together and to use. You find that as well, don't you, Magda, in, in clinic? Yes. I can promise you that they will come back with many questions, even if uh, if you explain everything to them. Uh, always so many questions appear and uh, the 
clients will see as an as an expertise and the only person who knows their genetics, uh, so know their best. <laughs> Yeah, and it really allows you to really fully prioritise interventions as well. So it can give a really good roadmap. But of course, you can, as a practitioner, everyone has their own slight way of doing that. So that can be completely, um, completely done to how you like to practice. Um, but it really does give the clients that in-depth genetic predisposition understanding, which is so useful and motivating for them, we know can help with compliance. And also there is some information there about supplements uh, as a guidance as well uh, for, for practitioners. Uh, and that's on the practitioner portal, not on the client portal. Uh, so it's there for you to use as needed. So some of the tools available on the practitioner website, you've got your ready to use questionnaires and they can be, you can issue an email to ask your client to retake those, uh, very useful. And also then they pop up onto the client portal um, so that they can access them. Um, and you can track improvement that way, as I've tried to explain by the changing of the avatar, changing of the report, the whole report will change. Uh, and you have all of this on the practitioner website for you as part of an online portal. You can track all of your clients on there. So you have lists and you can see the status of different clients and pat patients as well, which is very, very useful as a summary. Okay, so we also thought about some of the benefits for clients. Um, and I think it's really useful to think that you only have to do one test because your genes never changed during your life okay. it's the use of the questionnaires that's really important um isn't and i think you definitely agree with that don't you magda that it's the the tracking the ongoing tracking that's really important yes they usually ask if they have to repeat uh, their results after some time <laughs> Yeah, but they don't have to. So, and also the test is a swab, so it's painless. It's a inside the cheek swab, fully confidential. Uh, and there's this overall message of better understanding your own your own health, your own genetic makeup. Uh, but I think the the nice thing is this use of the questionnaires to really highlight that it's not just genes that don't determine our entire fate. It's to do with what we do in our everyday life. Uh, as much as anything and the two very much come together to give an overall package um, and that's the message that we very much work on at my dna health is getting that message across so the, here is a link to the practitioner portal and support and as i said if you don't have an account please do sign up for one it's free there's absolutely loads of information on there that you can access um, without even having ordered a test so do go and have uh, make an account and explore the site um, if you get this is a screenshot at the bottom of the website here you can log in for the practitioner login uh, you, where these arrows are and set up your account or of course if you're having some trouble please do contact the um, the practitioner account either the email or telephone number to get some support with that uh, and this will take you through to your practitioner um, portal And we haven't really talked very much about science in the background today. Um, this has just been a case study, but there it, we do have um, on fully online e-learning program, two modules available at the moment where you can work through the science yourself um, and um, understand the, the kind of research that's happening in the background if you want that level of information. Uh, it's, um, you can work at your own pace through it and there are CPD credits available for those. So there's four hours for the first introductory modules, which talks you through um, kind of the science of nutritional genomics and understanding a lot of the terminology and where that's come from. And then the, the second module moves into looking in depth at the SNPs that we cover uh, for from the carbohydrate and lipid um, areas and that is eight hours worth of CPD. So if you are struggling a little bit for your CPD at the end as we come to the end of the year uh, do consider signing up for our courses. There's a special offer on at the moment if you want both courses £199, £125 for that introductory course um, and it's important to do the introductory course if you have uh, to, to be able to understand the second course so those are sold as a package together and the website is here for you um, to go and have a look at the further information about there. There's a web page you can look at about the course. 
So just having a look at the optimal health um, products. There's two, as I mentioned, we've got the optimal health, which is the, uh, the more standard test, uh, which is 75 pounds trade for practitioners and with a recommended retail price of 99 pounds. Uh, and for the Optimal Health Pro, it's 150 trade, 199 pounds recommended retail price. There is a special offer if you have any clients or yourself, you have 23 me and me or ancestry data, you can send those files in and have them converted into our product. And that would be 25 pounds and you would need to call or contact the practitioner um, email um, or phone number to um, access that offer um, and talk through the options of the different tests that you might have. Um, and also for any ordering of any tests, you can go through those channels. The Optimal Health Pro, which we haven't discussed today, but which is in other webinars, um, is really designed for professional use. Um, so it's only available to practitioners uh, and has additional areas such as methylation um, and uh, really looking at detoxification and more specialist areas that we would be used to as practitioners. Um, and as I say, there is um, plenty of webinars that cover that on the practitioner portal. And of course, we will be covering that in future webinars as well. So I just want to thank Magda for her help with this case study because it was a really nice case study to work through. I found it really interesting. Um, I think we do have just a couple of minutes for any questions um, that anyone wants to ask about the um, the um, presentation so far. Or of course, you can contact us on the practitioner email if you have anything that comes to mind um, afterwards. So we've got some questions about um, when you would use the basic test and what the extra sections are. So I think I've just spoken about the extra sections, but when, when would you use the basic test, Magda, and when would you use uh, the more in-depth professional one? Oh, I think it depends on the client's needs. Uh, you, first of all, you have to ask them uh, what's their goal and um, if they will answer that they just need to lose weight, then uh, the basic one is absolutely fine. But if they have more health issues, uh, then uh, the optimal version is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, the, the professional one has been designed only to be used with a practitioner. The basic one can be bought without practitioner use, but it is better to be interpreted by a, a practitioner. Um, and I find that um, you can start with the basic test and then because all of the SNPs are tested, you can upgrade to the, the whole test um, at a later date without having to redo the DNA test itself. So it gives some flexibility if you have a client that's not so sure if they want to invest that amount of money uh, and it's useful to upgrade at a later time. I've certainly done that. Um, we have one specifically about a test. So I think we'll get back to you. Um, I'll pass that over to um, the customer service side to, to get back to you to see what's happening with that one. Um, and can the public buy the, the basic test without seeing a, a practitioner? It is possible to do that. I always recommend that it would be done through a practitioner because I think it's really important to have that relationship with client and practitioner together. The upgrade from the basic to pro, I will have to get back to you on that Gemma and I'll ask um, customer service to see what the status of that is at present. Yeah, we need to get back to that. Okay, well, it looks like there isn't too many more questions coming in. So thank you for joining us over your lunch hour um, of, to, to see this case study of Magda's. Um, and hopefully um, we will see you in the new year. But if not, it just leaves me to say have a great um, holiday over the festive pe period, whatever you are doing at the time. Thank you, Magda. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody.